What is going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Blake with the Linux Fraud and today we're going to be checking out Flameshot, which is personally my favorite screenshot utility. We're going to go through some of the things that you can do with it. It's it's a GUI application, but you can also use it in the terminal, of course. So we're going to go through both. We're going to check out the GUI and then also uh, check out some things that you can do in the command line with it. So I'm going to hit super P. That's the key binding that I have set up for this. And it's going to bring a little icon here right in the system tray. I can click on that. And you can see that it brings up this little menu here. 99% of the time, if I'm taking a screenshot, this is what I'm doing. I'm hitting the icon and then I am using this little crop tool to select what, what part of my screen that I want to take a screenshot of. And then I usually, you can either save it. You can see there's a bunch of tools down here and we'll go through some of those here in a second. But this is just like the basic usage. But you can see there you can drag whatever size that you want. Even if I'm like taking a full screenshot, I'm still doing it this way. I'm just drag, I'm going all the way up here to the corner and dragging. There's a lot easier way that you can do that, but that's how I do it. You've got either, you can copy it to your clipboard and then of course you could paste it somewhere else or you can just save it right there. That's a very basic usage of Flameshot, right? But if we do it again, we go up here and click this icon. And now if you hit the space bar, a little menu comes up. And this is actually, you can see it's a color picker. If you hit this tab that says grab color, and now wherever you press on your screen, it will actually, it'll show you the hex code for that color. So say I go over here, say I wanna know what this like grayish blue of the sky is, right? I click on that and that's gonna print out the hex code. Now this is super helpful, say if you like to customize your desktop or maybe your window manager uh, and you see a color online that you like, you can easily pull this up, click on that color, and it's going to give you that he the hex code for that color, which I think is super helpful. Now it works in any application, so let's say, let's exit out of here, say we open up Firefox. So we can go to like getfedora, right, .org. Say you want to know what that blue is, what that, what that very pretty blue is. So we can open up Flameshot clicking on the system icon up there, hit your space bar, click on grab color. Now if I want to know what that blue is, that, that like lighter baby blue, I can click on that and it prints out the hex code for me. 60A5FA. So that's the color picker. I think it's um, it's fairly helpful, especially like I said, if you like to customize your desktop or your window manager, uh, like to change colors up and whatnot, you can use that. Now Flameshot is actually fairly customizable as well. You can go up here if you right click on the system icon, you can actually click, go down here onto configuration and it's gonna bring this little GUI interface up. From here you can actually change the, the main color. So this right here will change like the, uh, the menu that pops up, the little, the small little menu and the color of like that crop tool and all the icons down at the bottom. So if I change it to red and now I open it up, see now it's red. And then so is that, like I said, the tool, all the little icons. So you can really change that to whatever color that you want. And then you can also, if you go over, let me show you something. We'll jump to a different workspace. Now we'll open up Flameshot. If I right click, it's gonna bring this little wheel up of different colors, right? Say I wanna click on this, uh, like this teal blue. <clears throat> if I pull this crop tool out, down here are some uh, different icons. So there's like a pencil icon, there's a line icon. Now if I click on this pencil, I can actually draw on the screenshot, right? Which is super helpful maybe if you're taking notes or something like that. But what this color picker does is now, if I open that back up with a right click, I can change the color. Now when I draw, it's green. And again, I can go over to dark blue, make some marks. Now like I said, I personally, whenever I uh, whenever I use this, I'm taking a quick screenshot and that's about all I use it for. So you can use the pen for like marking up notes, maybe the line tool or even this marker tool would actually be pretty helpful for like a, like a highlighter. Maybe if you turn this into yellow or orange or something, well that yellow doesn't really come up all that well. A screenshot of a paper or something like a document that would show up a little bit better. Now going back to the uh, the GUI, the configuration GUI, you can actually change the different, uh, the preset colors of that color picker, right? So you can go in here and you can change anything that you want. And say if I clicked on this magenta color, I could change it to Nord's magenta color, right? Hit update and that changes it to like a 
it's like a dull pinkish magenta color in the Nord scheme, but again, you can change those to whatever you want if you were to use those. You go over here to this next tab, File Name Editor. Within this tab, you can choose the uh, format that your files are saved under. So you can pick day, month, year, year, month, day, whatever you want. In these last, or in this next tab is just kind of a general tab. You can uh, set the path to save your screenshots in. You can see this one is just right there in my pictures directory. You've got some other settings you can do. So you could turn off the, the tray icon if you want it, and you can go through those if you want. You can set up like automatic launch on startup, things like that. And the last tab is all of the shortcuts. So you have a quick, easy to access uh, menu for all of the different kinds of shortcuts. Flameshot has a config file, right? So if you go into cd.config slash flameshot, you can see there's a flameshot.ini in there, uh, or INI, I don't exactly know how you would say that. I would assume that's flameshot.ini. Uh, I've seen other configuration files with that as well. So if we go to just do a NVIM flameshot. So there's a few different options in the configuration file that you can change. Disable tray icon, right? You could change that to true and that would, that would remove the tray icon just like you could do under here in the general tab. The draw color, this is going to uh, change the color of whenever you use like the pen or the line tool or something whenever you're actually editing the screenshot. You can also change the user interface color from right here uh, and also user colors, which is going to be that color picker. Now, I personally, I would just use the GUI over this because there are more options within the GUI and I think it's just a little bit easier. It's right there. This is a GUI tool, so might as well just use the GUI application. Now you can see this also says Upload History Max. I don't exactly know what that means or what that has to do with, but I'm assuming that has to do with the Imager uh, integration tool. Now Flameshot, you can actually upload your pictures, your screenshots directly to Imager, uh, but you do have to have an account with them, so I don't, and so I don't have, uh, I can't show you that. I've never used it personally myself, but that is something that you could set up if you have an account with them. Now that was the configuration file. We went through some of the in-app editing, the uh, customization, and also the config file, but let's open up a terminal and check out some of the things that you can do within that. So we'll open up Alacrity here. Now if you were to just do a, let me make this full size. If I did a flame shot GUI, it's gonna open up Flameshot, right? And from here, you can take a screenshot of whatever you would like. Personally, I'm just gonna go up and click on the icon and assist tray, but this is obviously an option for you as well. Now, you could also take a screenshot of your desktop and then save it to a particular path. So now, if I wanted to do that, I would type out Flameshot GUI dash P and then the uh, path to the directory, right? So if I did uh, home pictures, now that's going to bring that up again. If I was to hit enter from here, that's going to take a, uh, a full screen shot of my desktop. You can see there, then it's saved to uh, home pictures, and then it's saved as the date and whatnot. Now I could, if I wanted to, I could actually name the screenshot right here from the terminal. So if I just go back, do that again. Now say I wanted to uh, name this new-desktop, right? I'm going to hit enter hit enter again to take that screenshot. It's gonna save it in the directory pictures as new desktop.png. By default, it does save it as a PNG file. Of course, the directory has to be in there. So if I went into pictures and made a directory of wallpapers, now I could do flame shot GUI dash P pictures wallpapers newer dash desktop, right? That's going to open it up. Another enter, and it's saved as newer dash desktop dot PNG. So that's just a way to uh, take a screenshot from the terminal and also save that screenshot as whatever name you want to. Now we'll do one more here, and it's uh, the same as what we just did, but instead of just saving it to a directory, it's also going to copy it to your clipboard. Maybe you did like a dope ass rice or some shit that you're super proud of. So you wanna save it and then also copy it to your clipboard so you can go post it on the always poppin' Unix porn, right? Well, what you're gonna do is type in flameshot GUI 
dash c dash p path to the directory right so we'll do pictures uh wallpapers again and we're going to name it this hot shit hit enter hit enter again and it just saved that screenshot this hot shit uh dot png to that directory but also what i could do now so now since that uh that that screenshot is saved to my clipboard i could go over here we could even go to uh, imager now I'm not gonna post this picture but oh wow imager is temporarily over capacity well whatever forget them let's go over here to a new workspace uh, open up say LibreOffice and I do a control V and it pastes the screenshot right there and I just I opened up LibreOffice I just wanted to show you guys that uh, it copies it to the clipboard it copies it to the clipboard and then again you can uh, paste it wherever you want to and that right there is Flameshot, everybody. My favorite uh, screen utility or screen capture, screenshot utility application, whatever. It sounds like a mouthful. Again, I don't use any of those other features. I am purely only taking really quick screenshots, but that's just me. I wanted to show you the other features that it had and what you could do with it. Also how it had a config file and then and then all the, the commands that you could do. Now there are more commands. If you check out their GitHub, you can see all of those. Uh, I just wanted to show you a few of them just to kind of get your feet wet and whatnot. Because I know some people love to do everything from the terminal. I personally am a person who, who prefers the terminal over a GUI tool. But with something like this, I'm just going to use the GUI application. I'm sure you could add a lot more to uh, the config file, but it just seems easier to open up that GUI application and do all the tweaking within that, right? So so anyway, that's Flameshot. That's the video. If you guys did enjoy this, please hit that thumbs up button. And also, if you like this kind of content, consider subscribing because we have a bunch more content coming your way.